You know, sometimes when you make something, the details, they really, they really, really matter. For example, the last video that I made, if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link up in the description. The details really matter. Like I had to make a 3D model of something that exactly matched something in real life so I could like wrap essentially a 3D print around it. Today's video is going to be essentially the opposite of that. Today, it's not about making something that perfectly fits around a 3D object, right? Instead, today's video is more about making something that is more generic. But anyway, let me let me show you what I'm talking about. So I think like most people on the planet, I have a bunch of batteries and the problem that I have is charging those batteries. So I recently bought this. Um, it is a, I don't know, it's, it's a generic thing from Amazon, 200 watts scan charger, and it has a bunch of charging USB ports. This is going to go in my mud ring, and it's going to be there for charging these batteries. Um, specifically, one of them is this. I have heated gloves. I have a bunch of other random, you know, square-ish looking batteries that just kind of need to be put in one place and, and charged up, and then this thing needs to go someplace to, to kind of land. I'm not going to make something that fits this battery specifically, because that would be silly. These batteries aren't going to last forever. This brand of glove is not going to be the only one I ever have for the rest of my life. I, I, it doesn't make sense to make something specifically. I'm going to instead make something that fits this charger, and I'm thinking it's going to go something like this. It'll like come out like this, so the cord kind of comes out the back like it's going to plug in, and then just little like slots or, or little cubbies to put the batteries that are going to be charged, and it'll be, you know, about this big or whatever, and it'll kind of fit in the spot where it belongs, and I'll have a little charging station. The one pitfall I could have here is over designing this thing because I mean come on all it is is a box and the batteries are essentially just boxes in, in some way shape or form so I could over engineer this and I don't want to do that but I'm going to try to come to something that's just going to be easy easy to use um, and kind of stacks away does its job and hopefully it'll be a quick one so anyway let's get into the design and see what I come up with. <music> for this one starts like anything else that needs to fit something by making a rough design of the thing that it needs to fit. In this case, it's the USB charging brick. The reference isn't 100% perfect, but it does get the outside dimensions and a rough outline of the shape and location of the power cord as well as the little feet. And one thing to note, I didn't add any tolerances to the reference design. The measurements are exact. I made this mistake so many times when I first started doing 3D design. I used to add a little wiggle room to the reference item. I would then add tolerance to the final object, and the result of that would be too much slop in all of the different spaces. So now, every time I make something, the reference items are exact measurements. The tolerances are added to the thing that's being printed, just like in real life. Okay, now to the organizer. It starts out by just making a basic sketch of the overall shape of the box. I used the reference charger brick to define the total depth needed and then extruded the solid right over the charger. After having the two overlapping solids, I used the combined tool to cut the shape of the brick into the holder, leaving a perfect negative. Now I'll build in the tolerances so it can slide in with just a little bit of space. I didn't want it to be super tight since I knew the power cord would essentially hold it in place anyway, so it's uh, just kind of a happy medium. Next I needed to clean up the hole for the power cord in the back. Obviously the cord can't come out of the bottom, and since it's flexible it really shouldn't be an issue to put a little bend in there for the cord to come out of the back instead. I made a sketch on the back and then extruded a hole that connected to the space where the negative left the, the cord hole from the original combine. I also filled in the hole that was in the bottom and cleaned up the sharp edges trying to make it a smooth rounded transition for the cord to pass through. I then went around the rest of the negative space and just cleaned up the things that didn't make sense for the final product, like the lip in the front. This may seem obvious, but if that lip was there, the charger wouldn't be able to slide in. Then it was onto the slots for holding batteries. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these slots were not designed to be a perfect fit for anything. I knew the minimum size and just kind of eyeballed the rest in the sketch and then extruded everything up, leaving three millimeter thickness for all the various walls and dividers. Finally, making this thing look nicer by adding fillets, chamfers, and other aesthetic touches. As a general rule in 3D printing, if the corner runs up and down, add a fillet. This allows the printer to move smoothly without leaving a corner where the filament kind of piles up. As a last step, I decided to chop off the back corner because that was wasted plastic, and I think it looks a little bit better this way. All right, now off to the printer. All 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, here it is, hot off the printer. Do you think I made it the first time? I don't know, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. I think it looks pretty good. I think I might've got it on the first try. First things first, does the cord fit? Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Come on, don't do this to me. This should definitely fit. Oh, hold on, hold on, yeah, yes. Yeah, totally fits. Okay, maybe not totally fits, but I made it fit, and that's all that matters. Now, this should slide into here very nicely. Oh, like a glove, like a glove, look at that, love that. All right, now for the batteries. So I got these, these are for the gloves. Oh, look at that. I wonder if I can do, <laughs> yeah, sure can. All four of them in one slot, very good. And then I've got this, uh, it's like an LED headset thing. I'm not gonna blind you, but this is an LED strip. Um, gotta charge these things before we go out and take care of the horses at night. I'm just gonna plop that right there. That's all I got for right now, but let's plug this stuff up. And yeah, you know, the cords are still gonna be longer than they need to be, but at least it'll all be contained. One and two. Yeah, these chargers came with one USB goes to charge two batteries because it's for a pair of gloves. So, pretty good. Can I just put the extra in here? Oh, I sure can. Just tuck the extra away. Like that. And the final one. This one is USB-C, so one little USB-C cord. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna plug it in here. I gotta take it downstairs and put it where it belongs because I think that's just about it. It worked on the first try, people. How can you, how can you complain about that? Uh, I'll go ahead and share this online. I'll, I'll put this on Maker World if you want to download it. I'll even put a link to this because obviously it fits this. But if you want to put this whole thing together yourself and do the exact same thing, this is it. 